Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was actually in a valley that was <clears throat> a little bit like this in size, maybe a little tighter. And like I said, it was a couple of drainages, several drainages that way. And it was a nasty, nasty place. We found stuff, but by nasty, the bedding planes, these layers of rock, instead of going like this, they were, we were walking on bedding planes. And I think every one of us, I know I took a fall, I think Yoshi took a fall, and I think Steve took, I think all three of us took a fall on in that valley. Bad place. <clears throat> but the angle on these rocks, because I'd been spending a week measuring them, they were like 70 degrees, so nearly vertical. And we had our camp set up along park regulations. I mean, I'm not saying that because there's a camera on it. <laughs> um, but down by the creek, we were getting some, Yoshi and I were getting some water. And thankfully, it was Steve that saw the, the bear first because he's got the biggest voice. Because, you know, you get down by the creek, you can't hear anything. And here's something. And he's calling our names. And we turn, and he said, and you could hear bear. But of course, by the time you turn, coming right down this right down the creek is this grizzly bear doing just what grizzly bears do. I mean, it wasn't taking a beeline for us. It was just foraging. We happened to be where it wanted to go. We had just lit the camp stove. So quick, turn it off. Grab our bear spray. And I'm telling you this because you have to be aware of these bears. Don't freak out or anything. But the bear comes through. The helicopter's coming to pick us up in about an hour and a half. So we're kind of hoping he gets there a little early. But the bear comes through. So what Yoshi and I do, and Steve sort of side saddles the slope, is we get up on this little knife ridge, like this two little drainages here. You see how there's this nose coming down? We worked our way across and sat up there and watched this bear do what it does. It went down the creek and then decided to come back up the creek. And right across from us on, on a ridge like that was one of these bedding planes. And we're thinking all, you know, we're we're all Dr. Cocky Pants because we got our bear spray, we're on a slope, there's no way a grizzly bear is gonna hit us because this is 70 degrees. These rocks are nearly vertical. So that bear goes across that valley wall, the other side of us, hits that great big bedding plane that we were looking at. We all assumed the bear was gonna turn and go the other way. Instead it goes all Spider-Man and goes right across that thing without missing a beat. And then, just for grins, it hits the other end of the bedding plane, decides, hey, I don't like it over here, all right? It's not as interesting as that. Turns around and does Spider-Man back across the same vertical face. And our jaws just dropped. I don't know what thoughts were going through your head, but first I thought that was really cool. I didn't think a bear foot could do that. But then I thought, well, if that bear wants us, it's just gonna come and get us, no matter what. But I learned something about the way bare feet move because it just went right across that vertical face. Now, did not stop, stutter, step at all, just on it way. So where'd it go? And then it just went back down the creek and then, you know, an hour later, our helicopter shows up and we just thought that was the most amazing thing to see. So he never really saw you? Or well, I didn't, probably did, but, but we, didn't care. you know, Maybe we smelled too bad, I don't know. <laughs> but it was really, I've always thought about bear feet, not, you know, being shoeless, but how a bear's <laughs> paw works. And there's nothing in that anatomy that could have told me that a bear could do that. But there it was, the three of us saw it. Great story.